electrical ground. Now, electrical ground is really similar to charging by conduction. So, probably smart to start with a quick review, and then we'll be able to quickly relate it to electrical ground. We've learned that you can charge objects through conduction. Recall, we have a charge object, and we touch it to another, usually neutral object, and both objects are left charged. If it was a negatively charged object, and we touch it to a neutral object, well, some of the electrons in the negatively charged object, which again are trying to get away from each other, they repel each other, they move into the more friendly environment, that is the neutral object. And some of the electrons go basically spreading the extra electrons between the objects, leaving both negative. Again, not as negative as the original object, as the electrons are all spread between two objects now. Nevertheless, they're both carrying a negative charge. Again, if we started with a positive object, the electrons travel the other direction, making both objects positively charged. But the bottom line is charging by conduction involves touching and a path for the electrons to move. Okay, so now that we have a reminder, let's make a slight adjustment. Let's make the neutral object bigger, much bigger with billions and billions of atoms. Now, if we touch the negatively charged object to it, the extra electrons spread out, just like before. They're repelling each other and trying to get away from each other as far as possible. In this case, there are a lot more options for spreading out. And in an effort to spread out, they would all take advantage of that extra space, and they would all leave the charged object. You could picture that even if there were just two extra electrons left over in that original object, they're still repelling each other, and they would head out to that big object just to be able to spread out better. So really, what's happened in the end? Well, our charged object became neutral. It lost all its extra electrons. Well, the big object, it gained a bunch of electrons, but given its mass, the electrons can just spread out, and the extra charge isn't noticeable anywhere. So if we have a big enough object, we can basically discharge anything just by connecting them. Any uh, extra electrons just disappear into that big mass, and this could definitely be useful. So what is a really big mass that's easily available to us pretty much no matter where we're at, Hmm, how about our planet, Earth? If we run a wire into the ground, we could discharge it whenever we need. And coming up with a name for that, well, how about ground? Honestly, just playing with words a bit, but really, that's all there is to ground. It actually is ground, typically. Just look below you. Whenever anybody talks about connecting to ground or grounding a device, they're typically talking about a path for electrons that travels in the end to a metal pole or a grid of wires buried beneath the ground. We can also take a second to point out that if we were to have a positively charged item, it would work in much the same way. Discharging it would just mean that the electrons are traveling from the ground. The Earth, having billions and billions of electrons to supply, would give up all the electrons needed to neutralize the object. And sure, the Earth lost some electrons, but not enough for it to have any lack of electrons in any one location. Therefore, again, we've effectively discharged the object. We've grounded it. 